Morning, this is Darren Benson with Performance Motor Coaches out of Wolford, Texas. Want to do another little uh, drive along. This is a 2022 Renegade Classic we sold right about a year ago. Uh, the customer loved our van, uh, loved every part of it. Kids loved it. Uh, however, the other spouse involved wasn't a huge fan of our van, so. We've got the unit on consignment here in Texas. We're getting it all cleaned up, just kind of fixing minor little things. We wanted to do a test drive. We just did a test drive about an hour ago on the uh, on one of the little M2 chassis, but wanted to kind of do a comparison to a bigger chassis like this. So this is a Peterbilt 567. Uh, probably the least turning rig out there on the market. However, you know it commands a lot of respect being a Peterbilt. But so we'll jump in, do a little test drive. Factory seats, my favorite setup. None of the BS aftermarket, not true aftermarket, but the RV aftermarket that unfortunately has gotten in some of these coaches. So nice air ride system right here. Uh, you can lock the air ride uh, where it doesn't bounce up and down. There's a lot of different functions and features within the seats and they are heated as well. So Cummins, 600 horse so x uh x15 i think it's 14.9 liters so 605 horsepower 1850 torque 13 speed ultra shift transmission nice you have all the steering wheel controls there's nothing there's no aftermarket accessories integrated with the dash itself so you've got your smart nav and you've got the uh, the factory setup or the factory screen that utilizes that's utilized as your camera monitor Great dash air conditioner. Most of these bigger chassis have a great air conditioner. Most of them are integrated with additional air conditioning you put back in your sleeper. So if you're just running your dash air conditioner, it's going to do a great job. So tilting and telescoping right here as well. I actually had a difficult time, oddly enough. So the, the forwards backwards is all the way down the ground tough time with that the other day it's been a while since I've driven one of these and both these seats do turn around I know that one does for a fact so I think just the uh, passenger seat turns around from the pedestal that I'm looking at run this down so I don't seat belt mm -hmm. So pretty much all of the bigger chassis, uh, whether they're an, whether they're an Allison, whether a DT, whether they're an Ultra Shift, same type setup. So that's your gear shift selector and your engine brake as well. So go ahead and put it in gear. The Ultra Shift takes a little bit more throttle to get it going than like the Allison, you just put the Allison in gear and it goes forward to backwards. I'm obviously a bigger fan of something with more gears to it. Uh, so the Ultra Shift does take a little bit more. Getting used to the DT transmission back behind the Detroit or the Volvo iShift, definitely a lot smoother than these guys. So going through the gears, it's about 40 miles an hour, obviously you're your Allison will have a lot more acceleration but once you get going you'll see that you get a lot more power in these guys that's about 40 miles an hour none of the chassis that have been brought in on the 567 have any of the adaptive crews integrated into them they were having some issues doing the adaptive crews in this wheelbase. Uh, they have figured out a workaround on it. However, I've not seen anything uh, with these yet. Oddly enough, we have some 389s that are coming in. The more traditional, classic looking Peterbilt, and those don't have any kind of adaptive crews on them. Figured the guy that's looking for a Peterbilt 389 probably wants the least amount of OE controls as possible. So they're actually a little middle guy right there. 
here and these will move around. So we're running at 45 on the access road. We will get out on the highway. Fifty-five miles an hour here as we get on it. You can tap shift this as well, upwards or downwards. So we're in 13th gear. So I can sh shift it down to the 12th. That's 70 miles an hour. It'll take a little bit more driving. These rigs, uh, Peterbilt compared to, say, a Volvo or a Freightliner, in my opinion. But we're, we're running 75 miles an hour, not a quarter mile up on the highway. You think the average one point mile, mile per gallon is correct? Longer hood, of course, you see a lot more square hood on these chassis versus, you know, say a Volvo or a Freightliner. Those are a lot more aerodynamic, a lot more, uh, probably a little bit more fuel friendly as well. In general, we see most of the bigger chassis that get in that six mile a gallon, um, six, maybe seven miles a gallon. Once you do, say, like a 500 horse, most of those will yield. Know, seven, eight. We've heard, we've heard from guys getting about 10 miles a gallon, but definitely not the speed that I drive. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it all engine brake right here. You can actually hold this downwards and they have even more engine braking. Highway turnaround, not a problem to get through, but we'll pull back in the dealership and you kind of see that parking lot's going to get a little bit smaller. lot more abrupt, abruptness in the shifts. I think you probably could catch that as we have a little bit of stabilization in the video, but still think you'll kind of get that moving around. About 40 miles an hour right there, 45. Most of these transmissions can be reconfigured if you want the shift points to stay a little bit uh, out a little bit longer so you get some more acceleration. Most of them will have an economy and performance. The, generally the, the default will be performance as opposed to the economy. Sixty-five miles per hour. A little bit of wind noise underneath the bunk overs. Obviously the bunk overs will always have more wind noise to them than the aero cap. However, you cannot do an aero cap on any of the Peterbilt chassis, only the Volvo and the Freightliner chassis. We're running 75. We probably got about a 15 mile an hour side wind running at us. We're maxed out right there at 75. Fuel economy's doubled. Turn signals, like I said, there all go into the screen here, and you can run that all the time as a backup. So, engine brake right there, I'm gonna actually hold that down, I'm not gonna give it any foot brake at all. So, you have an idea of just what you'll get in natural engine braking. So we get it downshifted to about 30 miles per hour. That 
that was probably probably half a mile or so from the time that we pulled off the highway. So we pull in the gate. Our gate's relatively wide. We're 50 plus foot wide gate, but I am going to swing out a little bit so I can make it through there. We were actually able to do a complete 360 right here. We'll turn this guy all the way. Way short of doing that 360. I'll back up. this turn right here so drastic difference back up again definitely lots of planning with these larger chassis and especially the Peterbilt's themselves even able to miss this sign so you can see a lot more work running this guy I guess at the end of the day it just depends upon how cool you want to look get it pulled back up in here hopefully this unit will be available Technically, it's available now. We've got to fix just little minor things to it, get it detailed. We've been pretty darn busy. Down in the comments, we'll put the original video to this whenever we, uh, we're at the factory to kind of uh, tie those things together. But hadn't done a drive-along video of this guy yet. Kind of long and short of it. Um, obviously, lots of lots of power, big big chassis, but lots more planning uh, whenever you go to maneuver this rig right here. So um, we will uh, keep on pounding out these videos. We always appreciate you guys coming out and watching the videos. Uh, make sure you guys like, tag, and subscribe.